Alright, what's going on you guys? It's Kevin the Full Metal Ginger and today we're going to talk about my top 10 favorite metal subgenres. Now I did this uh, shit probably about a year ago I guess it was. Um, yeah, I just going back and watching I didn't like how that video turned out. Uh, I only did 5 whereas this is going to be a top 10. So I guess I kind of wanted to come back and expand upon it. Uh, there were some I left off that I didn't feel like I could articulate well enough. And there were some that I was kind of didn't know how to categorize it properly. And there's a couple on here that I'm not sure I should even do, but I'm going to do it anyway. So, um, yeah, it was just kind of a clusterfuck, and I just wanted to redo it. T but technically, this is more of an expansion on that video, so we will run through that, and uh, hopefully this will turn out a little bit better. Um, really quick, I do have an Instagram page now, so if, hopefully the link will be in the description. You guys can follow me there if you want to do that. Uh, my Facebook page will be there as well. So, if you want to jump on there and hang out, I appreciate it, and we'll fucking get together and talk shit. Listening to Rosk, Miasma, another album I don't fucking own, but, you know, there's the only way I can show it to you. And this is a awesome, atmospheric black metal album. Just came out this year, so as many times as I've listened to it, it can definitely be on the end of the year list, for fucking sure. To turn it down a little bit. So, like I said, this is going to be an expansion video. I will leave a link for the other video in the description, though. I don't really want you to watch it because it's fucking terrible. So, uh, yeah, top ten. This is some of it's going to be the same, some of it will be different, and there'll be shit added in there. So, this is really what this video is. Uh, number ten, uh, brutal death metal. This is a genre I'm really fucking particular about. I don't know exactly how to explain it. It's just one of those things where if it's not done just right, I won't like it. But <clears throat> Bands like, um, you know, Disgorge, obviously, Brody King, Guttural Secrete, uh, Devangelic, and I'm not really much into the slams for the most part, but I do like Cephalotripsy, uh, Devourment. It's just gotta be, it's gotta be done right. Gorgasm is another big one I should have put on there, but, uh, I don't know where if it's just such an influx of it that it, a lot of it sounds the same to me. It's probably why I don't listen to it all that much. But when I do find a band that I really dig, I will listen to it constantly. So that's number 10, Brutal Death Metal. Could have said more, but, you know, eh. I'm just, I'm hit or miss on it. I either like it or I don't. Uh, number 9, Doom Metal, a, a, a genre that I've not really gotten into up until the last maybe year or so. Uh, there's just not a lot of stuff I thought I would like, but I guess, you know, you get older, your taste change, you look for something different to listen to. So I had to put Doom on there, um, and I gotta credit Acid Witch, because if it wasn't for them, I'd have probably never got into this genre. But from them, I went to Candlemass, I started checking out, like, uh, Dwell, uh, Majestic Downfall, Electric Wizard, you know, just for whatever reason, I just could not get into this, but, you know, as time goes on, the more shit you start to listen to that's good, it kind of makes you want to delve into the genres a little bit more. So this is kind of my way of thinking on Doom Metal. So it's still a learning process for me. I've not really scratched the surface too much, but I am getting there. So hopefully I can start showing some more doom metal bands here in the future. Because I definitely need some more shit, man. I have maybe, maybe 10, 12 albums that you could consider doom metal. So that's number nine, man. Uh, number eight, fucking Sludge. Never in a million years thought I'd get into this genre. And I I don't know, the, just the first few times I would hear it, I did not care for it. I didn't dig it. I didn't... It just didn't do anything for me. But, you know, again, as time goes on, maybe your taste change a little bit or you find that one band that kind of gets you interested and you start, you know, starting to dive headfirst into it. Uh, bands like fucking I Hate God, Weed Eater, fucking course, love Weed Eater, uh, Buzz Oven, Acid Bath, Bongzilla, man. Um, just great fucking bands. And, again, it's just, I don't know, I guess it's just finally clicked with me over the last few years. I'm finally starting to get it, and again, it's a, another genre that I don't know too much about, and I haven't scratched the surface too much, but I'm getting there. You know, I'm learning. Uh, slowly but surely, I'm really, really grown to love it over the last few years, so yeah, uh, definitely need more, man. I got some I Hate God, some Weed Eater, and that's probably about it, man. So, we're, we're getting there. I mean, there's so much other shit out there that I fucking need, and but Sludge is definitely on the up and up with me. Number seven, man, Thrash. I think all of us at some point started in terms of getting into extreme music with probably Metallica, Slayer, um, Creator, Destruction, all that kind of shit, man. Slaughter, Razor. And for me, it's, again, it's like I really like the old shit. And I like what a lot of the newer bands are doing, trying to replicate that sound. But, like, 
brutal death, it has to be done just right for me to like it. So, what I do like about it, I really, really love, and what I don't like, I fucking hate. So, this was kind of, I wasn't sure where to place this one, just for that fucking reason. But, I mean, bands like Nuclear Assault, um, like I said, Creator, Sodom, Slayer, yeah, I think we all owe Thrash a debt of gratitude because I, I'm pretty sure most of us started in Thrash and kind of moved our way out into death metal, black metal, you know, whatever else. That was just kind of the one that scratched the surface for most of us. So I had to put Thrash in there at least at some point. And uh, for what I love of it, um, yeah, I'm still a huge fan of Slayer. Uh, I like still like the earlier Metallica stuff, fucking Creator. You know, it fucking still gets me every time. So there's number seven with Thrash. Number six, this one was so fucking hard and I didn't really want to put this one here. I probably should have put it with another genre. But I want to separate it because they are very, very different. But number six, War Metal. I mean, you take bands like Blasphemy and Black Witchery and Conqueror, Bastille Warlust and tell me they're, you know, tell me they're different from Destroyer 666. I mean, a fucking course they are. It's a totally different style. And it's just fucking amazing it's bludgeoning it's barbaric it is absolutely psychotic to me um just i really it was really hard because i really wanted to put this in like the black and death metal genre but i mean it is really in a corner all of its own the fucking chaos the raw quality the how fast it is it's just more barbaric more sadistic more evil than what you'd find in your typical black death black thrash black whatever so I had to put that one there, man. I, I figured it was separate enough to where it could be on its own. But, you know, I like listening to it, but it's one of those genres I have to be in the mood for. Like, um, I mean, I love Blasphemy, I love Black Witchery, but I'm just not always in the mood for it like I am for certain other shit. So that's why War Metal's at number six. If you disagree with me, thought I should have put it in black, and let me know, man. Write this shit in the comments. I definitely want feedback on this fucking list. <coughs> so number six, War Metal. <clears throat> I really should have got a goddamn drink. Uh, number five, New Wave British Heavy Metal, man. Another one we all started with at some point, I would imagine. Uh, for me, it was like I had to finally pull my head out of my ass and say, hey, you know, this shit isn't just old people music. It's, you know, what inspired a lot of the music I like. And I don't know, I guess where I grew up being naive and fucking egotistical thinking I knew it all, and then I'm not even going to talk about these bands. <coughs> but within the last probably... Yeah, 10 years, I've really gotten into all this shit, man. Judas Priest, Iron Maiden, Angel Witch, uh, Satan, Venom, all kinds of fucking other shit. I put Venom in here. Yeah, fuck you. I don't care. I don't think it's really as black metal or new wave black metal or early black metal as everyone says it is. But, yeah, I mean, if only I had been listening to shit or if I had been born, you know, 10 years earlier, it would have been really cool to be able to grow up on this, you know, maybe go to thrash, go to death metal, go to black metal. But, again... 86, you know, you're kind of already in the thrash zone, and it's just kind of hard to, you have to backtrack for most of your life, and that's just kind of how it worked for me, <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, by the time I got into my early 20s, it was, it was finally time to kind of kick back and start listening to this older stuff, and I mean, I totally dig it, got some uh, Judas Priest, some Iron Maiden, I need to get some Angel Witch albums, I fucking love Angel Witch, fucking Satan, too many to fucking talk about. I love the new wave British heavy metal. It's fucking amazing. Shit. Alright, moving on. Number four. Depressive suicidal black metal and atmospheric black metal. And you guys can fucking shit all over me for this. Um, I do hear a difference, but it's not as much of a difference between the two as a lot of people like to say it is. <coughs> At least in my opinion. I mean, you have your atmospheric shit and your depressive shit, but a lot of times, man, all the depressive suicidal stuff sounds very similar to the atmospheric stuff. There is an atmosphere to it. It's just very dark and evil and depressing and sad, you know what I mean? So I, I lumped them in together. I mean, I couldn't separate them enough to want to split them apart. So I just kind of lumped them in in the same category. But that being said, I still absolutely love both of these uh, genres. You have a fucking disaster, Shining, Silencer, Droog. I'm a huge fan of Droog. Uh, Alsace, Blue Dice Nord. And... Again, I'm very picky when it comes to these two genres. I want the music to take me on a journey, you know what I'm saying? You know, I really want I really want it to put me in a different mood than I'll, I'm already in. But again, a lot of times I'm just, you know, I have to be in the mood for it. I have to be in the right state of mind. And a lot of times this shit doesn't work when I'm when it's like spring and summertime. I really need to be listening to this shit in the fall or winter 
Panopticon's another one I should have put on there. Um, I don't know why it just doesn't do anything in the spring and summer. I guess everything's so lively and, you know, all... I don't know. You know what I'm talking about, man. It just doesn't fit the summertime like it does the fall and winter. And especially being atmospheric music, I want the outdoor elements to represent that atmosphere as well. It's just, it's more... It takes you more on a journey, That I think. It's more imaginative if you listen to it during the colder weather months. So, I don't know. I just really have to be in the mood to listen to it. But when I am, you know, when it's on for me, it's probably my number one out of everything else I can listen to. Because, I mean, fuck, it was really chilly uh, last weekend, actually. Uh, not chilly, but, I mean, chilly for fucking summer. You know, it felt like mid-October or so. And I, you know, was running to the store to get some shit and fucking put on Panopticon and I'm just fucking loving it and it just doesn't do that in the fucking summer so I guess you all know what I'm talking about so depressive suicidal atmospheric black metal it has to be in the right I have to be in the right state of mind it has to be the right time of year but I absolutely love these fucking genres so they're on number four all right getting into the top three man the top three the shit that I've listened to more than anything else for certain and uh these are kind of kind of vague in a way I guess you could say but you know they're the best way I can describe them and it, it's very particular part of these genres so you know what I'm saying when I get to it. Uh, number three fucking death metal and specifically your old school death metal your Florida death metal uh, you know your early 90's late 80's fucking death metal fucking deicide uh, cannibal corpse suffocation death malevolent creation autopsy morbid angel all that shit man this is what this is what, this was the genre that said, okay, I fucking like everything now. Uh, when, when death metal finally clicked for me, I realized that black metal was going to click for me and fucking black and death metal and every fucking thing else was going to click for me. I don't know what it was. I, I don't know if I just couldn't get used to the vocals or whatever it was, but eventually once it fucking sunk in, I was like, fuck yes, this is my shit, this is my life, this is everything I fucking want in music. The fucking intensity, uh, God damn, just some of my all-time favorite albums, you know? Uh, shit that I, I, every time I listen to, it's so nostalgic. Uh, it just always brings me back when I first discovered all this music, man. I mean, I go back and listen to Cannibal Corpse, and it instantly takes me back and helps me to remember all the good times I had listening to that album. Same thing with Deicide. Uh, all these bands, man. This is the shit that was probably my first true favorite genre where I wanted to, you know, experience everything it had to offer. And there's so many more I could have put on here too, but you know, it's just every time I listen to this shit, it's so nostalgic. And if it was, if this was a list of nostalgia, death metal would probably be number one. Just all that early shit. There's so much of it out there, and I've it's rare to find an album that I don't like. You know, sometimes it's got overproduced and all that shit, which is fine. But in terms of the albums that came out then, man, some of my all-time fucking favorite albums. And I could have put the Swedish scene in here too, and I probably should have, but. Granted, I didn't listen to it as much as I did the American shit, you know, the you know, Morbid Angel, your Deicide, Cannibal Corpse, all that shit. That's what I listened to the most, so I had to put them in there right there. I uh, absolutely love this genre still to this day, so Death Metal at number three. All right, top two, man. Here we go. Uh, number two, traditional black metal. Um, I guess what I'm talking about is the early Norwegian sound and how some of the other countries kind of adopted that same sound like your fucking um you know your dark throne your emperor immortal burzum mayhem and then you have like all the you know other countries like drown the light uh moonblood sargai satanic war master graveland that fucking genre is what i fucking love i love how you have the raw quality it sounds like there's hardly any bass if there is bass at all it's just fucking amazing man um and I don't want it to be cliche. I, I'm trying not to be cliche with this, but I don't know what it is. But you know, I live about a quarter mile off the main road out here, and every time we get a good snow, that's exactly what I want to do. I fill my iPod up with all these fucking albums. I'll put it on, you know, a uh, what do you call it? A group or you know, a group play or whatever it is. The fucking collection, you know. And then I'll just walk up and down the road, man, in the snow. And it's so peaceful, so quiet, and it just reminds me of being somewhere up, way up in the north. It just fits the atmosphere so fucking well. So I absolutely love traditional black metal in that sense, man. It just gives me that cold, fuzzy feeling, I guess you could say. That's fucking stupid. I'm sorry for saying that stupid shit, but 
Yeah, um, there's, again, like Death Metal, there's not many albums that I don't like in this genre. And, uh, again, it's very explorative. Uh, I always want to find more. Absolutely love it, man. Traditional Black Metal, number two. All right, number one. Probably should have put War Metal in here, too, but, I mean, Black and Death, Black and Thrash, Black and anything. I just call it the Black and genre. Fucking Destroyer 666, you can put Dissection in there, Angel Corpse, uh, Gospel of the Horns, Goat Penis, Diabolus, uh, Goat Horror, I guess. There's just so much out there. And what I love about it, you get the best of fucking my two favorite genres. My, my two and three, actually. You get the intensity and the aggression and power of death metal with the darkness, the ambience, the evil vibes of black metal. And you put them together and fuck, you can do no wrong, man. Um... I guess I just love the variety. I love how it's sometimes raw, sometimes well produced. But I love the combo that they just put together. It's just fucking amazing. Uh, I mean, that's probably for sure what I have the most of in the collection. And I can't get enough of it. There are very, very, very few albums that I do not like when it comes to this genre. Just amazing fucking shit. Love every bit of it. Yeah. I'm done with this shit. I know this is a collection of fuckness. And I apologize for that, but... Thank you guys for watching. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. I always want to hear feedback. Um, you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram now. So I'd really appreciate that. Uh, link in the description if you want to subscribe. Go check out all these genres. I'll have all kinds of links and shit in there for you to check out. If you're unfamiliar with some or you want to dive more into it or just whatever. And that's all I got for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. And keep supporting Extreme Fucking Metal.